believe we are live. I'm going to check it out and make sure. Are we live? Are we live? Are we live? What is up, everybody? Give it a second for people to join in. If anybody is going to join in, Edwin the Comic Jabroni coming at you. What is up, guys? Uh, so, new comic book day, Wednesday. Vanessa Ocasio says we're live. How do I sound, my love? How do I sound? Everything sounds all right? And everything looks okay? Uh, so, new comic book day was on Wednesday. That was the 23rd of October. Yesterday, I dropped my video on uh, Marvel and on DC. Talked about, what, four books each? So, eight books in total. Uh, and I had a good time doing that video, reviewing those books and uh, reading them, obviously, right? There was some really good stuff out there. I, in my opinion, I thought that uh, Batman Curse of the White Knight issue number four was the best of the bunch, man. A lot of people were going to tell you Immortal Hulk 25 was just incredible. And man, you really got to read it, you know, more than once to totally dive deep into it. And that's cool, man, if that's your thing. To me, after first reading it and then after reading it a second time, it still just didn't like give it to me man I, I don't know but batman curse of the white knight and you might call me a batman homer which is eh, i don't know probably yeah that's what i am i'm a huge batman fan uh curse of the white knight i thought it was great and it was really a story just to reek in his comics rod what is up man i know you are you were on that drive to 1000 and i see everybody on twitter and on instagram pushing uh to get you to a thousand i hope you are able to do that by the end of the day um so Curse of the White Knight is more of a story of Barbara Gordon and just her grief, the grief that she's feeling because her uh, her dad has, uh, you know, he was killed in that last issue. So now she wants to go and kill Azrael. I absolutely loved it, man. Uh, Barbara Gordon has had such a incredible story built around her, especially after the killing joke where she was, um, where she was shot by the Joker and she didn't have use of her legs and then in New 52 they brought her back but during in between that time she was the Oracle I thought it was great man so Rod you like the new setup I got here man I had to change some things up using OBS I'm starting to figure some things out on OBS and I I uh I like the setup here man I, I like the setup I know why last week OBS wasn't working for me because I'm a dummy when you open OBS and you go into the settings you go into the settings and you look at the chat or uh, into the stream. You have to put your stream key in, right? Got it. But right above that, it asks you, what service are you using to go live? Jeff Comics 813, what's up, brother? Thank you for joining me, man. Friday, I like to go live on Fridays and talk about some new comics that I picked up on Wednesday. So when you go into settings under stream, right above the stream key, it asks what service you're using. And you have to put YouTube, right? If you're going live on YouTube, put YouTube. But for some reason, it had gotten changed to Twitch. And I don't use Twitch. Uh, don't really even know what Twitch is. I think a lot of big gamers use Twitch. Um, but that's why it wasn't working for me. So I, I switched it back to YouTube and it looks like it's working guys. How do you, how do you like this setup, man? I got my, the video right here. And then below me, I got the comic jabroni banner. Then, uh, this way I got the live chat. I was able to figure out the live chat. I hope that looks good for you guys. I'm, I'm super excited to use OBS and to, to dive deeper into it, figure out more things. Comics Club, what's up, man? Uh, nice of you to join me, brother. The Comic Pusher down there in Florida. Uh, so, we're going to go over Image, and we're going to go over indie books today. There's only four um, that I picked up, so not many. Plus, I have two packages that came in the mail this week. Uh, Aaron Finkelstein, I hope I said that right. Fink Finkelstein, Finkelstein. I'm sorry, bro. I, I hope, Aaron, I hope I said that right. Uh, Repair Tech Tony, what's up, guys? Thanks for joining. We we were going to go over Image and Indie. I hope you had a chance. Good morning, Senior. What's up, DJ OG Danny Boy Peru? What's up, man? I hope you guys had a chance to check my video out from yesterday where I discussed Marvel and DC. There were some really great books that I discussed and I reviewed and I went over. Um, this video, we're going to probably go about an hour and then at Two o'clock my time, Central, so three Eastern, and then Mountain and Pacific, and 
you're just gonna have to figure that out. I have my next episode of What the Heck is dropping, man. I recorded it, I edited it, and it's dropping today, and it's going to be going over um, verified recalled comics, which in the video, I'm gonna show you three recalled comics that I have in my collection, and I'm gonna show you a really great source, a website that will help you look for more recalled comics and maybe you have some of those in your collection uh, on top of that in the video i do the giveaway i announce who the giveaway i show who the giveaway winner is from episode one of the dc universe logo variants and that very special person wins obviously three books but you get this really cool armband man uh this wristband says i love my comic shop and it's going to be game worn <laughs> as they say right in uh in sports right like the, the the jerseys or whatever the shoes it's going to be a a used game worn used by the comic jabroni so you have something special if you win so definitely check that out at uh two o'clock my time three rods time and uh one and noon whatever so let's start this off guys you know that if you've watched my videos on reviews i love using comic book roundup so we're gonna go ahead and switch over to that so comic book roundup great comics club love your what the heck is videos uh sharing them with our facebook followers hey comics club comic pusher thank you so much man uh keep bracket and send whiskey definitely i'm a huge whiskey fan and it's noon here, and I know I'm about to open up some packages, and what I usually do when I open packages, I will review a whiskey, but I figured, eh, it's a little early. It's never too early for bourbon, but I'm going to hold off. I got a uh, fishing trip uh, this weekend down to the coast where I figure I'm going to be drinking some bourbon, so I'm going to hold off on that. JB Discovery Bay, what's up, man? Thank you for joining, brother. Uh, Where the hell was I going? Anyways, comic book roundup, man. Great source for us comic book lovers if you ha if you want to it's five o'clock somewhere you're absolutely right um if you want to know about a book that comes out during the week and you're not really sure if you should pick it up this is a great source for you to go check out because it has critic reviews and it has user reviews right like you and me it's free to use you can go on there create a uh, a username password go in and start reviewing books yourself as you can see on this page you know you got Immortal Hulk is on there. Mara or Mar I say Marauders, but Perry Comics. I just watched his videos that I think he said the Mar Martyrs, Mar Martyrs, Martyr, Mar Martyrs. I had to I had to bust his bust his balls on that one. Uh, bust his chops. He he was pretty funny. So you got a bunch of books on there. Uh, sometimes with indies, you don't get a lot of user reviews because I. I have no idea. People should be picking up indie books, man. I'm, I'm a big advocate of picking up indie books, especially if they're really good reads, man. That's the biggest thing about indies. In my opinion, they are some of the best reads going. Marvel and DC, yes, they have absolutely wonderful comics to read, but indies, man, almost every time you pick up an indie, dude, there are going to be some awesome, awesome reads, all right? Uh, spec value, maybe not so much. A lot of indies are getting option for movies. But if you can, like, if you look at the trajectory on, like, how much the book is worth, an indie that gets optioned doesn't really hit the stratosphere like a Marvel or a DC first appearance. Uh, now, you can, you guys can tell me if I'm wrong or if I'm right, or Edwin, you're kind of on track with that. I think so, in my opinion. Yes, you got Saga number one. That's going to be a big one that people want. Walking Dead number one. Yes. But those are one shot. That's, that's, that's a one off, man. That is. Uh, you know, for every one of those, there's a Marvel or DC book that just just shoots through the roof on how much it's worth. I hope you guys can see me. I got my uh, got my John Cena shirt. You can't see me. Uh, I love this shirt, man. Not the biggest John Cena fan, but uh, I bought this shirt because they were having like a sale. WWE was having a sale online uh, for T-shirts, and I think I paid all of like ten dollars for this shirt. And I just like whatever. F it, man. Let me just grab one. So let's get into it, man. The first book that we are going to be discussing is Going to the Chapel. And I picked up that A cover right there, written by David Papos. The artist is Gavin Gidry, and it's from Action Lab Comics. So if 
uh, we go over here to the side and it looks like you won't be able to see it but the critic rating of an 8.5 and there's two user reviews of a 10 man 10 two users say this is an awesome book and I got to tell you myself this is a great read I absolutely am digging and loving this read because it's just a different it, it's different from everything else that we're really reading with superheroes you know um let me go ahead and switch this back over to me see how that looks and i hope the live chat man the live chat fix itself so uh it's just different it's it's not a superhero versus villains type of deal this is a heist book bank robbery right think of think of it that way but instead of a bank it's a wedding that is being uh robbed and this bad elvis gang is robbing this wedding because it is a big high profile wedding there's a lot of money at this wedding and what the uh the bride is wearing is this like emerald necklace, diamond encrusted necklace uh, that's worth a ton of money. So they figure, hey, this should be an easy grab. Let's go in there and grab and, and get this um, and get this necklace. Well, it does obviously it doesn't work that way. Things don't never work the the right way. But there's more to the story because it seems like the leader of the gang has prior has a prior relationship with. The bride. So whose side is the bride on? Is the bride going to be on the side of her family and trying to get out of this chapel? Or is she on the side of the bad Elvis gang because she's had prior relationship with this leader? And you find out in this issue a lot of that. There are cops that are surrounding the outside. I'm going to show you just some of the uh, some of the artwork there. I think Gavin Guidry's artwork is is fantastic. It's sort of comedic as well. You get some parts where you laugh because the family of the bride, they're they are insane. They're rich. Uh, you know, the, the dad is is a rich banker, I think it is. And um, the, the grandmother is stuck in a wheelchair, but she is insane. And the things that she says in this book just makes you absolutely laugh. One of the things that I like about it is, so the cops are on the outside, but there is no like... There's no way for them to be able to see what's going on inside. Nobody has a phone except one person was able to sneak a phone, right? They have two phones because they are like, uh, on, they're an online personality. So they have a, a secondary phone. And the only way for the people inside to communicate with the cops outsiders to, is through these pictures on Instagram. And the reason is, is because she says, well, I don't pay for a plan. Like I pay for an internet plan, but I don't have minutes on the phone to call anybody. So really the only way they're taking pictures of themselves and they're posting it on Instagram. And I just thought that was hilarious, man. Aaron Finkelstein says, one of my favorite indies right now. Yeah, going to the chapel. I was actually sent this book by David Papos on uh, the PDF, you know, to read it uh, before it came out on Wednesday. And uh, instead of making a video and, and talking about it, I knew I was going to pick it up on Wednesday because yes, I have the PDF and that's cool. I get to read it. I get to read it first, but I, you know, I want to support artists and writers that I enjoy reading and, and looking at their stuff. So uh, I picked this cover up. I know there are three covers, which I was hoping they had the cover C. And I think that the cover B kind of looks like that one. So chapter two, there you go. Uh, so going to the chapel, you know, I said the critic rating was an 8.5 and that's out of nine rate uh, out of nine critics, man. Ricky Camacho, what's up, man? What's up, Comic Jabroni? Wish I could watch, but got to get back to work. Well, hit the lurking, man. Put it on your phone and just lurk <laughs> if you can. But thank you. Thank you for joining, brother, just for the little bit that you could. I, I truly appreciate it, man. And I, I say this every every time I go live. I am humbled and I truly appreciate everybody that watches my content, man. There is so much awesome content out there especially from the four horsemen of comics right myself rod the Rican, perry comics uh johnny oh johnny boy old man john's comics with kids you know us four horsemen of comics we're putting out great stuff man so i'm uh, i am truly appreciative and so happy that you guys watch my stuff and think that uh i am worthy of of being watched man so thank you so much perry comics in the house yo yo sorry had a meeting what did i miss what did you miss you did not miss the book that you want to talk about perry i know that you want to talk about money shop but i'm gonna save that one to the end reruns of jabroni are okay too yeah man definitely go go back into um go back into the archives of the jabroni videos and go uh go check those out man some of my older videos they they're god awful i think but 
it's funny to see where I've come from, right? Where where I've and and I still use my my cell phone, my iPhone to record my videos and uh, I think it looks pretty good. Right now I'm using a, a Logi, 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 L O G I webcam to do this OBS. Uh, I hope this damn live chat is working out well. I don't know. This is the first time I'm using that live chat. If it don't look so well, man, don't look nice. Let me let me know and I'll fix it up. Definitely fix that up for you guys. Uh, so this is fun. Let's get some water before my mouth dries out. Uh, Perry Comics uh, laugh my my butt off. <laughs> the money shop the the money shop always comes at the end, anyways. I think he meant the money shot. Got to drink water, guys. Definitely drink water. That is uh, keeps you healthy, keeps you feeling good, keeps you feeling good. Aaron Finkelstein says, my favorite indie is Knights Temporal. I got to tell you the truth, brother. I never picked up Knights Temporal. And I remember issue one coming out. What was that? Maybe a month or two. And uh, I just, I never, uh, I didn't pick it up. And and, and maybe I should have, you know, some somebody in the comic community telling me, hey, it's a good book. Uh, I definitely want to pick that up. But I could read it online. Um, Rod has given me the opportunity through a website that he knows to read comics online. Uh, Perry Comics Knights Temporal Art looks great. Uh, I've only seen the cover, uh, and the covers always look really nice. But you got to be careful with that, right? Because there's books out there where the cover looks amazing. It's like, oh my god, that is the best cover. But sometimes they have a different artist working on the cover than they do on the inside of the book. And obviously, you guys are telling me that's not the case. That the cover looks nice and the artwork inside looks great. One book that I want to tell you about. And it's the next one we're going to go over is uh, is another one where the cover looks great. And I think the artwork inside falls a tad bit short of what the cover is. And that's going to be Tommy Gun Wizards. And this is uh, writer is Christian Ward. And the artwork is honest is done by the same gentleman, Christian Ward. Uh, well, it says Sammy Cavella. I'm going to show you that name right there. Sammy Cavella. I don't know how you say the A, the A with the with the double dots on top. Is it uh K Kivila? Kivila. Kiva, I have no idea. But anyways, guys, look at this cover, dude. That cover is dope. These uh I think inside the book they call them the black coats or something like that. And this is this story. Let's go over and switch to Comic book roundup. So comic book roundup, and I know I got my camera in the wrong spot, and I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to fix that in the next video. But the critic rating is an 8.5, and that's only out of two critics. We're gonna scroll down. Uh, my monkeys fighting robots, a rollicking adventure comic that celebrates multiple genres and the comic book format. Beautifully crafted by everyone involved. Uh, look out, it's black coat. Yeah, look out, man. They got Tommy guns, bro, and they're. And they're not wizards, they're actually spells. That's one thing that you learn about in this. You see different people, right? You got the Untouchables with Elliot Ness and his whole group. Then you got Al Capone. You got this woman in red who seems like she's a witch. Then there's another gentleman that's white. He's all white. He's got a white beard, a white suit on. And you think he's a, he's a regular dude. Yo, Bake the Snake, what's up, man? Monkeys fighting robots. Now, that's a comic I want to read. Well, that's, yeah, Monkeys fighting robots. Maybe it's something that you need to... Uh, Need to create, bake? Create it, man. Aaron Finkelstein's Strange Skies over East Berlin is pretty dope, too. You are absolutely right. That is an amazing read. And I reviewed it two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, I reviewed that book. And I, I loved it. Spy Tale. I'm all into that, right? The comic jabroni loves heroes and villains. I love a good hero versus villain story. But sometimes I want to read a great spy tale. Or sometimes I want to read... Something like this, man. Tommy Gun Wizards or a heist, right? Like uh, like going to the chapel. Uh, so Tommy Gun Wizards, if you've ever really watched, and I know Perry's going to say, I haven't watched it. If you've ever seen the movie Untouchables, right? You got Elliot Ness versus Al Capone. And in this time, during the, um, you know, in the 1920s, 1930s, alcohol was, it was during the prohibition, right? Nobody could have alcohol. But this story takes, it's a different take. It's not alcohol that's... Um, that's in prohibition right that nobody can have it's actually magic this is a magical realm it's new uh it's chicago but it has magic never seen it i knew you didn't see me i'm with you jabroni sometimes you need a good mafia read yeah definitely man um 
just change things up, man. Some, sometimes heroes and villains, yeah, it's the same thing over and over again. There might be a little twist here and there, but it's the hero versus the villain. And sometimes sometimes the villain wins, but it's always the hero coming back. Or sometimes the hero just wins outright and beats the crap out of them. But I want to read a spy. I want to read some mafia tales. I want to read a good bank robbery heist book, man. And they're giving it to me in the indies. You don't see too much in Marvel and DC, uh, but you see it in the indies. So Tommy Gun Wizards, you find out that not only are the people walking around, are they actually humans, but some of these people that you think are people are actually just spells and they're protection spells. So the man in white, which let me see if I can get I can get to that page and show you what the man in white looks like. Uh, let's see, let's see. Where is he? I should definitely have this better sorted out, but you can kind of see him right here. I'm going to blow this up just a tad. So you can uh, see him right there, and he's holding this guy up. So the man in white, he's actually just a protection spell, and he's there to protect Al Capone. Um, Perry, you definitely need to watch Untouchables, Goodfellas, Great Mafia. Yeah, Goodfellas, that's the one with, uh, with funny how like I'm a clown. Yes, that is the... What am I funny? Like, a, am I a clown? Am I a clown? And then they go on to kill that guy. Spoilers. <laughs> funny because I amuse you. Yes, that is an amazing scene, man. Uh, Tommy Gun Wizards. I think it's an amazing, amazing read. This is issue number three, and it's it's got one left. So it's a mini series, and you guys know sometimes I'm I'm not into mini series because you pay full price for these books. And then a year later, you could probably find them in the dollar bin. But when it's a story like this, where with a with the known history that I've, I I know, right? I'm a, I'm a historian. Uh, I I'm going to school for history. I have seen the movie uh, Untouchables. I have done history or a, like uh, I have done research into Al Capone and the mafia in the 1920s, 1930s. This is just a cool, different take on it, man. It's magic that has been outlawed by the government, and Al Capone is trying to sell it to the public. But not only to Chicago, he wants to branch out, man. And by branching out, the the being that actually is supplying the magic to Al Capone is not happy with that. He wants Al Capone to stay in his territory of Chicago. So now you have a battle not only between Elliot Ness and Al Capone, but now you got Al Capone, Scarface, fighting this being. And I don't want to tell you who the what what this being is because it would, it would kind of give give something away but now he's fighting that being as well so it's cool man you got these different forces trying to you know um trying to battle each other out for this magic see wood in the house what's up man i ain't got your shirt on today dude i don't have the newsstand shirt on i uh i'll definitely have it on for one of my next what the heck is videos i absolutely love that shirt see wood because it's a newsstand one of my favorite variants of all time, man. DC Universe logos and just being able to collect variants. I absolutely love it, man. So, what? who else we got? Same people. Absolutely love you guys. Thank you for joining me. We went through two books. Let's open up one of the packages before we get into the next two. This package right here comes from my homie, Wolf Warner, all the way in New York City. New York City. So uh, I asked him, there was a New York Comic Con was what, like two weeks ago? And they had a um, they had a Power Rangers Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles like preview because that book is coming out in December. But they had a preview that was exclusive to, uh, to New York Comic Con. And I, was, I hit him up. I was like, hey, hey, Wolf, is there any chance that you can get this book for me, man? He's like, What's in the box already, Edwin? JB, what's in the box, bro? Um, he's like, yeah, dude, I'll uh, I'll try to get you that book. And he said it was kind of a, it was kind of tough to get this book. Like it was sold out the first day. Um, it was sold out the first day, and then he he went back Saturday, and and it was there. How does someone donate a book to the Comic Core fundraiser auction this weekend? Yes, he would. How does somebody do that? So there you go. Oh man, this. It's even nicer up, up close, man. So much white space that if you ever want to get this signed, it would be so easy. But there you go. There is the New York Comic Con exclusive preview for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Power Rangers. Now, the only thing I wish this actually had instead of the Red Ranger 
helmet, I wish I had the Green Ranger. You know, I'm a kid. I was born in the 80s, but I'm a kid of the 90s. Power Rangers was big in my life in the 90s. And I was a Tommy fan. I was a Green Ranger fan. I remember when they took the Green Ranger's powers away with that candle. And that was like a six part story, man. It was like six episodes of when the candle, you know, the uh, Rita Repulsa lit the candle. And once it went all the way down, and please tell me if any of you guys remember this, but when the candle, you know, went all the way down and it extinguished, that was, that was it. The powers of the Green Ranger were gone, man. Yeah, man, I like the Green Ranger. We had the same name, so I had to, had to roll with him. Um, yeah, definitely, uh, I had to be a Green Ranger fan, and it hurt my heart when they took the Green Ranger's powers, but he came back. He came back powerful as the White Ranger. Spoiler alert. You know, it's been 20, almost 30 years, but spoiler alert on that. Uh, the Green Ranger Tommy becomes the White Ranger with the, with the Tiger Zord, man. But I was a fan, dude. I love, I love when he would, uh, that cover is super clean, but if I get one, I would need them all. Yeah, I don't know. Do they, do they have, dude, I didn't know that. JB, do they have all the, the Ranger helmets with the different, uh, weapons of the turtles? Holy crap. Man, I'm gonna have to go get that. Um, damn, I didn't get to that episode yet. I ruined it for Perry, man. I ruined it. Um, but I like the I like the Dragon Zord more than I like the Tiger Zord, man. And he would play that damn flute. Do, 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 do. You don't remember that? Am I crazy? I'm not crazy, guys. I'm not crazy. I'm maybe with the comic jabroni, but I'm not crazy. <laughs> but this is cool. I, I can't wait after uh, after I finish this live stream, man. I'm gonna open this up and read it because I want to read the preview. I'm excited, man. Turtles and Power Rangers. Woo! That's cool. You know. Um, DC and Marvel, more DC than anything, have done a lot of those crossovers, man, where you get like Masters of the Universe with the uh, with Batman in there, and it, I I think that's awesome, dude. And you saw the Justice League with the Power Rangers not too long ago. Batman, Jabroni likes the flute, no, bro. Come on, man. He did have a flute. He did, and it was a weapon too. On top of that, Agu Ramos, Jabroni likes the flute. I've never been able to play an instrument at all, man. Never. I am not. Uh, uh, how, how do you say I, I'm, I'm not musically inclined. I can't sing. I can't even hardly hum. <laughs> Comic books are my thing, man. And, and lifting weights, <laughs> but I'm not a music guy. Any of you guys out there in the comic community, are you a music? I know Dan Percy is Rod likes to say Pear, Percy. Uh, that dude, that dude can strum a tune, man. He's on the guitar. Awesome, man. Never played an instrument. Violin would be dope. I've always been a fan of the piano, man. I remember uh, there was a movie with Jamie Foxx, right, where he played, somebody help me out, Jamie Foxx. He was playing the piano, dude, and that was just, I thought it was amazing to be able to learn to play the piano. Uh, I think it's awesome. Repair Tech Tony says sax player here. Saxophone. I the first, the trumpet and keyboard, Perry Comics. You can't play no dang trumpet and keyboard, dog. I don't, I don't believe it. Send me a video. <laughs> He's in the army now, real, real camp there. Um, the saxophone. My earliest memory of the saxophone was uh, Bill Clinton playing the saxophone on um, on one of those late night shows back right before he got elected to president in '92. Uh, damn, what was the name? I can't remember the name. You guys are going to have to help me out. I, that was like my earliest memory of the saxophone. So what was I? I was probably like eight, eight or nine. I was a band nerd in school, mostly get out of class. Dude, I remember high school. I remember that. And I'm, I'm getting off on a tangent. And I absolutely love Arsenio. There you go. Whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs> um, band nerds. I remember the band. The band geeks in high school always had the most fun, man. Their band trips. I remember hearing stories about the craziness that they would do, man. And when American Pie came out and that that girl was a band geek and she talked about putting a flute in places that we can't talk about on live uh, on live YouTube. Um, I guess it was all true, man. It was all true. Insane stuff. Anybody else can play an instrument? Because like I said, Edwin the Comic Jabroni can't play an instrument, man. So the next book we're going to talk about, guys, is... The last issue of this series as of right now. That one time at band camp, I stuck a flute in places we can't talk about on Edwin's channel. Now, maybe Perry Comics channel Friday nights we can, but not right now. I play the turntables. That is awesome. Obviously, right? DJ OG. Yeah. Turntables. That is cool as heck, man. My dad 
uh, has turntables at his house, but he's not one of those DJs. He just likes listening to vinyl, and he's got a ton of vinyl at the house, man. And he loves listening to that music. Uh, he, my dad's, you know, old school Puerto Rican. He loves listening to salsa music, uh, and so he has a lot of old school vinyl where it's just salsa, man. Uh, next book, guys, from Image. Image. We got Sharky, issue number six. Mark Millar writing it. Artist is Simone Bianchi. We're going to move on over to Comic Book Roundup. It's got one review of a 10. You see it right here. And it says, so did this final issue deliver? Hell yeah. And then some. Uh, So that is the A cover that you see right there. And this is, I believe, the C. Yeah, it is the C cover. Uh, I like it right there with Sharky just sitting in his uh, Millennium, his Millennium Falcon. Uh, There are no user reviews on there. So I'm going to give you Edwin's user review, man. This is the... Uh, this is the last issue of Sharky for right now. I believe because of the ending of this, we are going to get a second series. And we always see Netflix on the back. So at some point, this is going to be a Netflix show. Uh, Perry Comics Fun Fact, Vinyl is about to outsell CDs for the first time in like 25 years. I believe it, man. Uh, what's old is new again. It's funny, like 8-Track really didn't take off. As far as like people wanting to go and pick up the retro stuff. But vinyl is where it's at, man. People are loving that vinyl again. Uh, I don't even remember the last time I bought uh, a CD. I get all my music online or I have the Apple Music app and I just listen to it on there and I pay monthly. I think it's like, I think because I'm a student, I pay like $4 a month to be able to just listen to all the music I want, man. So I think that's the way to go. Uh, So Sharky the Bounty Hunter. Incredibly fun read from issue number one. Got a lot of jokes in there. Uh, This guy's a bounty hunter who is out trying to, you know, claim a bounty of like a billion something or other. Let's just call them cruds. A billion cruds. And he is trying to capture this woman who everybody wants. But through the process of issues one through six, we find out that it's not actually her who's the bad guy. It's somebody else. So this issue just finishes off of him actually being able to get this bad guy and get the billion cruds but what's funny is he's gone through all of this trials and tribulations man and uh he finds out that the billion cruds when it's actually um put into his account into the money that he uses in his galaxy or his world it goes from a billion cruds to like 60 dollars, and he's like that's not even enough to get me back to my planet so just funny little things thrown in and out of there. Uh, it does it does end this series, but I think we will definitely see Sharky again in series two, right? There's going to be a series two just because of the way it ends. He has this little kid that he's taken from one planet and he goes on the adventure with him called Extra. I think his name is Extra Tony or something like that. And through the process of these books, he loves this kid now, man. He's taking him on as like a surrogate son. I want that Sharky show. Me too, man. I definitely want a Sharky show. But as you can see here, he says, yep, you you can be a bounty hunter with me, Billy. Extra Billy. There it is. Extra Billy. And he says, Sharky, professional bounty hunter and son. So now they are going off on an adventure together. And you see Extra Billy uh, right, right, right there. Boom. And he's got the... Got the SMG, the small machine gun. He's like, what's up, suckers? Give me my money. So I liked it. Uh, And honestly, when issue, when series number two, if it ever does really release, which I think it does, um, I'm probably going to pick it up, man. I like a good, funny read, right? So I talked about books about like heists, magic, the mafia. Well, this is a good sci-fi story. And... Yes, there's Star Wars, Star Wars stories in the Marvel Universe. And as big of a Marvel fan as I am, uh, and Star Wars fan as I am, Star Wars for me is movies. I've tried, and I've tried, and I've tried reading the comics, and I just can't ever really get into it because there's just so many characters. You can't just jump into an issue because there's a ton of backstory on Star Wars. But if you pick up Sharky right from issue number one, you're getting everything, man. There's no real backstory that you've missed out on. Everything they're going to tell you is in issue number one. And you continue on, bam, bam, bam. But it's like Star Wars. Yeah, there could be a a new Star Wars story issue number one. Or Vader Down, I think, is one that came out. 
But it's not just a Vader story. There are tons of different worlds and different people and different planets that they talk about that if you haven't really read Star Wars, if even if you've watched the movies, you're not totally going to understand, like, who the hell? Who the hell is this, man? Uh, let's see. What do we got here? DJ OG says, love that Sharky series picked up all the seat covers. Yes, I did pick up almost all the seat covers on this one, man. I I, I like this. Kind of looks like a like a painting kind of and this dude with the mustache sharky with the mustache is just dope bro definitely definitely dope so i got one more book left and it's the one that perry comics could not wait and he's in his office just waiting waiting when is he gonna talk about when's he gonna talk about the money shot guys the money shot now this this is crazy man when i talk about sci-fi this is sci-fi taking taken to a, a triple X way, right? X rated. Boom. There we go. So let's go ahead. We're going to move on over. Comic book roundup. We got 14 reviews, man. There were prob comics shaking my head. Prob. Probably. Probably comic. Prob comic. Prom. Prom comic. This is a porn comic is what this is. This is, this is crazy. There you go. Aaron Finkelstein, you got it. So, uh, we got 14 critic reviews, and they're giving it a 7.9, man. So, we got a 10, right? Timely and intelligent money shot is outrageous space romp that's packed tight with genuine laughs and biting social commentary. But if we roll all the way down to the bottom, there is somebody that totally pooped on it with a 3.5, right? AIPT, which a lot of us might actually know. It says, tries it might. Money shot was has a concept that's too unwieldy and thin, undone even more by an unfunny derivative script. I I have to say that I do not follow along with that. I think that it is as good as, not a 10, but yeah, that's 7.98 up to an 8.5. I think the artwork inside, and I'm showing you this, right? This, I grabbed the, it, it wasn't even a black bag. It was just a poly bag, and the poly bag came like this. Right, so it had this, it had the comic, and then on the back side, it had that. So, uh, not entirely sure. I want to show you <laughs> what the cover looks like because it is, it's a little X-rated, but it's not as bad uh, as some of the other X-rated books that we've seen before. Uh, that's an angry mom. Who's an angry mom? Oh, A A I P T, angry mom. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, it's it's not too bad. I I'll show you kind of the the top money shot it's got an old school feel to it i guess i won't show you really the bottom of it let me let me blow blow that up bam so i like this whole old school feel it even has this uh the approved what does it say approved for use as quality <laughs> wank fodder <laughs> let me uh let's see will that focus there you go boom <laughs> that's oh don't want to show you it all so what's the premise, man? The 3.5. I want to get to the Fantastic Four. I saw it. I saw the Fantastic Four homage at my store, but I wanted I wanted the, the dirty cover. Damn, Edwin the Comic Jabroni, you dirty old man. Um, I just I wanted the dirty cover. I wanted to see what, what was on there. But yeah, they had that homage, and I, I probably should have picked that one up too, or just that one. But what's the premise, man? You got these scientists that are trying to get funded by the government to, you know, to whatever, do their uh, their scientific experiments. And one of these experiments costs just too much money. They have the ability to go to different planets, right? Kind of transport themselves, but it just costs too much. So one night, the one of the head scientists, she goes home and she's about to have a good time by herself. It was pretty fun read without being too perverted and had some good humor. Yeah, uh, that's what I'm, yeah, definitely. That's what I'm getting to is like, she goes home, she's about to have a good time by herself, but she goes to this, website that is totally outrageous it's like dinosaurs with old with old women and old men and it's it's weird man it's weird and she's like but these people are getting all these views and they're getting money for this so she concocts a plan uh, let's live stream all of us scientists going to different worlds and having scientific experimental sex with aliens and we'll live stream it and we'll get paid. We'll have people pay us, kind of like through a Venmo or PayPal or whatever. And the more likes and the more views we get, the more money, and that will uh, that will fund our science project. So that's that's a cool concept. 
But then you get to the point where they're actually out there and this head, the head scientist woman, she is about to go down with this squishy looking um, aquatic alien. The rod mentality. She went down the porn rabbit hole. We all been there. Not proud of myself. <laughs> Laugh my the, the rod mentality. Let's do it live. That's what she said. Let's do it live. So uh, they have this little robot with them that can actually translate the alien language. And right from the jump, dude, I can't even I can't even show you the first page. But she says, uh, I want you to F me, sexy fish man. So uh let me let me see. I don't want to show you that. But there's the fish man and this little robot up here, he's translating and he bleep 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 bleep. And the fish man's like, All right, let's get down. So the way that they're paying these aliens is with water. And oxygen, I want to say, because I guess on some of these planets there is no wa- water or whatever. So they're give- they gave him a bottle of water to have sex with the head scientist woman, and it just goes on crazy from there. They get abducted, they get put into like this coliseum type of environment where we might see an orgy in the next episode or in the in the next in the next comic. It's it's flipping insane, man. It is insane, but I liked it. I liked. Not just because I'm a dirty old man. Whatever any of y'all want to say. I liked it for the concept. I liked the sci-fi aspect of it. And the laughs, man. The, the LOL. The ha, 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 ha. That. I thought, it was, I thought it was funny, man. And I want to see where they go from here. I don't know if this is... This is more than likely going to be a miniseries. Um, Money Shot does not seem like it's going to be a long-running series. And if it is, that is insane to me. How many... There's, there's millions and billions of planets out there, right? They could go all over the place. I'm going to show you, um, so inside of the poly bag, right, you get these two, um, you know, whatever, but on the back side, it looks like they're like pages that you can color, so that's cool, uh, and down at the bottom, it says, love comes in many colors, so if you guys want, you can go ahead and pick that up, and if you want to color those in, by all means, guys, color it in, what I'm going to do is when I actually bag and board it, I will bag and board it with these two. Bam, back back to back like that. So, that's it. And that was from Vault Comics. That, to me, is an indie. And I know I'm going to get some crap from Perry. And I'll get some crap from maybe uh, Johnny Boy. But I think Image is no longer an indie publisher anymore, man. They are putting out a ton of comics just like Marvel and DC every week. Right? Big time, man. Spawn's hit it to 301. Indies to me is like Vault, Action Lab, um, even kind of Dark Horse is getting up there, but I think they're they're still like one step below. So yes, you have Marvel and DC, man. They're going to be the top dogs, but then Image is right below them, and then like everybody else is underneath that. That's my mentality, but who does it hurt? It, it, did, did it hurt you for me to say that? No, Perry. I'm talking to you, Perry. I'm talking to you, brother. So I got one more package to open up, guys. Bam. So this was an eBay purchase. Aaron Finkelstein can't get into porn comics. I prefer to buy my porn in private. You buy porn, Aaron? That stuff is free, brothers. 2019. <laughs> uh, image are for independent creators. Yes. Independent creators. But they making money, brother. Image image is still a big time publisher. Um, but independent creators, I guess. Yes. But... But please don't go cry because Edwin called it it a big time publisher. Um, so, <laughs> Aaron, hit me up after this, man, and I'll, I'll give you a couple websites so you don't have to buy it no more. <laughs> God damn. Anyway, so this is an eBay purchase that I made. God dang, about a month ago, man. After I made my what the heck is DC Universe logo variants, which I think you guys should go check out. Um, I went on eBay. And I found a book on there that's a DC Universe logo variant that's pretty hard to find. And I found it at a dope price, bro. A dude dope price. So we're going to open this up. Oh, I hate these packages, man. I flipping hate these packages. Uh, let's see. Let's cut it open. What's in the package already, Edwin? What's in the package already? I uh, hope you guys are having a great Friday. I did not have class today. My uh, professor canceled class. So I was... Super excited about that. Oh my goodness. Look how they sent this, dude. This is how they sent this, guys. 
What do you think of that? I don't think Image is independent. They big time. Yeah, not even half of DC or quarter of Marvel, but okay. I'll go cry. Um, yeah, they're... <sighs> They're up there, Perry. And I know we... Hey, this is going to be... This is the best thing about this comic community. We can we can have conversations. We can still be friends. Uh, but we can have conversations about it. Anyways, look at this, man. This packaging is horrendous. Look at this little... Look at this little thing they put on the front. What the heck? I'm going to throw that out that way. My, my son is over in the... At the at the door watching me. Oh, man. This is... God, that pisses me off so much. I guess they don't like positive shipping feedback. Yeah, for sure, dude. I'm going to uh, I'm gonna be giving them some uh, some negative reviews after this. But what did I get? So if you guys uh, remember from that DC Universe logo variant video, I talked about how those variants came in sealed packages like these, and this is a Batman and Robin Adventures back to school set. So you get two comic books. You get a pencil, one notebook, and one free poster. And this uh, this comic right here, I think it's Batman and Robin 18. And it's a very early appearance of Harley Quinn. And she's actually on the cover. I was able to actually buy this uh, at the last Comic-Con that we had here in San Antonio. And my wife is at the door now. Everybody watching me, watching me, watching me. Uh, what do we got? Coffee Breath, creator owned versus owned by Disney. Warner Brothers makes some image indie hey that's your opinion bro it didn't make me cry perry's the only one crying about it i just think that they are one step above an independent they're below dc and marvel but they're one step above just because of how many books they're pushing out all you know every week and the amount of money that they're taking in and plus spawn has made it to 300 and i think that's a good barometer to say dude they they've made it there's not many other indie indie uh, publishers out there that have, have put out a 300 issue title but they've made it perry's just emotional that's all perry give the give the video a thumbs down i'll take it brother so anyways man this back to school set is awesome and as you can tell right here in the corner this is a dc universe logo variant and it is not going to be in the best shape i'm not entirely sure if i want to open this oh but it even has the hanging oh it's got the hanging tab guys what 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 i'm excited about that i'm a huge um i'm a huge batman fan I, I you know i like harley quinn as you could tell right there got my my batman adventures 12 right above me but dang i would like i would like to use this pencil take it to school use the pencil oh yeah so what do you guys think, man? Uh, this was super cheap on eBay. I was so surprised. The seller actually had, he had like 10 or he or she, I apologize, had like 10 of them uh, listed. And at the price, I was like, damn, I want to buy more than one. But I took a step back. I said, Edwin, don't do nothing crazy, man. Because these, even when they're not in the package, this Batman and Robin Adventures is like a $20 to $25 comic. And now that I have it sealed, um, I think it's worth even more. That is super cool. This is the first one that I've ever had that's been sealed. Because a lot of those DC Universe logo variants, if you look them up on uh, on eBay, if you get a sealed package of three comics or 10 or 20, they're crazy expensive, dude. People want like $100 for a sealed bag of dollar comics, except for like maybe one issue in there is worth any type of money. So just at the price, and I pretty much, if you look at uh, $4.79, that's about what I paid for it, man. So I paid pretty much retail, I guess you could say. Got a Green Lantern 55 DCU variant this week. Yeah, man, I'm a huge fan of the DC logos down there in the bottom. I have some, you know, some harder to find ones. Uh, I got that, that first appearance of Doomsday, which is a fifth printing of that book. I have, the, um, I think it's Green Lantern 50. I got Green Lantern 50 and I think issue 49, which is first appearance of uh, of the other Green Lantern, Rainer. Rain, Rainer. Rainer. I can't remember his first name for a reason right now. Coffee Breath. If I didn't see the packing, I would ask for a link. Yeah, man, that's the only thing, dude. The, the packaging um, the packaging was bad. Packaging is bad. But, I mean, it's still sealed, right? If we look... If we look around it, there's no there's no gaps, there's no openings. I wonder what the other book in here is. And I don't want to mess it up 
too much. Can you imagine if the other book in here was like a Batman Adventures 12 and nobody knew because nobody ever wanted to open these up to look? Holy smoke. But it's it's not. It's not. Because that's not, that's not the back of a Batman Adventures 12. That is the back of a Batman Adventures 12. And this is uh, The Phantom. That really crappy movie from back in the 90s. Um, so, let me know. Should I open it in another video sometime? See, would? Yeah, I would love those. Really want 49 since the cover where Hal is wearing all of the rings. Yeah, so it's not... For, I have 49, but it's not a DC logo. I have 48, which is the one where uh, the Green Lantern is like kneeling down and crying. I have that as a DC logo. And then I got issue 50 where it's Parallax. And I've got that one in DC Universe logo variant. So it's cool. Sometimes with these logo variants, man, you really want to... There's a ton of them out there and they're all worth a dollar or two dollars. But there's some key issues from back in the 90s that have that variant, that logo on them, which I, I think makes them uh, makes them worth more, makes them something that a collector would want more. And I know some people just say, well, I collect comics just to read them and I love them. But, you know, sometimes, hey, it's nice to have a couple books in your collection that 20, 30 years down the line is is worth more and your collection isn't just a bunch of dollar books in a long box man so yeah i got a ton of comics man i got like 2500 comic books but i got some that some good ones you know hey all of us do well i wouldn't say all of us but most of us especially in this uh have superboy nine no i do not have superboy nine uh green lantern on his knees in tears sounds like hollywood yes perry always with the jokes uh perry you going live tonight for uh for late night with perry I might want to jump on there, man. We can talk. We can definitely talk more about Money Shot. More on your channel than I can talk on mine. Um, cough your breath. If I didn't see... Oh, okay. No, Superboy 9 is that first appearance of um, of that shark, right? And it's a Superboy, and they're coming out of the water, and the shark. That's a really nice one. That is one that I do not have. One that I'm actually... Uh, I don't even want to, I, I don't want to show it to you because everybody's going to go outbid me and oh I got to keep it secret. But there is a Flash book DC Universe logo variant with the first appearance of a character uh that has a DC logo variant that I'm actually bidding on and I think it ends today. King Shark. There you go. King Shark. So Perry says he's going to go live. Uh that is awesome. Definitely be there. I am going to try to jump on. We're going to drink some bur well, I'm going to drink some bourbon and I might review it. I have a single barrel bourbon that I have been wanting to review for you guys. And I think it is an amazing bourbon that I'm going to talk about tonight on Perry's channel. Guys, in one hour, I have the next episode of What the Heck Is releasing, coming out. It's a quick, it's like 11 minutes long and it's going over uh, verified recalled comics. So if you don't really know what that is, or you're not sure if you might have one in your collection, check that video out. I drop a link to an awesome website that will help you figure that out. Find those. Um, I think it's amazing. Check that video out, man. Give the video a thumbs up. This is your first time watching me. Think about hitting that subscribe button, man. I'm dropping videos. I say all the time, but it's usually about maybe twice a week. Um, going live more and more and more tick tock tick tock sounds great around 10 or 11 eastern man so guys thank you for watching thanks for joining in the chat i hope you like this whole obs uh setup that i have perry was telling me to stop the mortal biggie shack what's up brother nwo for life dog um perry was giving me crap for using stream yards because uh i don't know perry just likes to bust balls but he said edwin use OBS, you have it, you can do it. And I said, yes, I can do it, Perry, I can do it. And I did it, Perry, I did it. Ah! <laughs> so, um, I love it, man. I, I, I like OBS, I'm gonna continue to use it. And I'm going to continue to play with it. So you might see a different setup next week. So be, um, stay tuned next week. We're gonna talk about Marvel and DC on this show, the live show on Fridays, guys. You have a great day. Perry's always complaining. Perry is a complainer, but I love him very much like a brother, even though I've never met him in real life. I don't even know if the guy that we watch in the videos is actually Perry. That could be somebody else. Huh? A robot. An alien. Funny guys. Funny guys. So, anyways, guys, take it easy. I'll see you next time. Have a great Friday. Have a great weekend. Read your comics and uh, spend your money on the stuff that you like to do. Anyways, be the best version of yourselves you can be. I'll see you next time. Peace. How do we do it? How do we do it, Perry? Like this, like this, like this.